Tonight, the row over Bankshire Hill reignited after a fire and a roof protest spark an emergency. WA's Mitch Marsh, man of the match, as Australia clinches the first test and Nathan Lyon bowls his way into the 500 club. See the moment a teen bikoon was caught from above. Detention nightmare, a refugee detained by Australia for a decade says he's lost his childhood. See how a new multi-million dollar marina is taking shape on Perth's north coast. And Christmas rush, retailers reported increase in shoppers looking for bargains to save their festive budgets. Live from Perth, 7 News with Tim McMillan and Angela Sun. Good evening, welcome to 7 News. Those stories shortly, but we begin with breaking news. A police car has been hit by a fleeing driver, sparking a manhunt that's underway as we go to air. This video capturing the moment two officers tried to drag the driver out. Watch as the suspect accelerates and clips the door of the police vehicle. Morning Turks is at the scene now. Mon, are the police officers OK? Tim, good evening. Yes, they are OK. Luckily, they stepped out of the way just in time and the police vehicle wasn't badly damaged either. Now, this happened about 90 minutes ago, as you say, on Guildford Road on the on-ramp to Tonkin Highway in Bayswater. You can see in this video an officer trying to break the window to get to the driver. As the driver accelerates away, the officer tries again to open the door. It doesn't work. The car weaves between the officers, sideswiping their car door and then racing. Away. Now, we don't know why police were trying to stop the driver or the car, but tonight, as we go to air, it is an ongoing police operation. Guys. Mon, thank you. Perth's juvenile detention centre was on fire again last night, reigniting a political storm over where to house teenage offenders. Two boys are now likely to be transferred to tougher conditions at Unit 18 after scaling the fences to climb onto the roof at Bankshire Hill. Banksia Hill's most troubled teenagers are sent elsewhere to a maximum security adult prison, so this doesn't happen. Prison officers in body armour, police and fire crews responding to the youth detention facility's latest flashpoint, where two inmates climbed onto the roof after starting a fire inside last night. The rampage causing debris to fall and strike a custodial officer. An incident occurred, a couple of them uh, scaled the roof. Uh, they were talked to, the discussions took place, and before 11pm they, they voluntarily came back down. It's the first time trouble has fled in public view since May, where youths were handcuffed at gunpoint to end a riot involving 50 detainees that lasted through the night, exposing the broken youth justice system that's in the middle of an overhaul. Still unable to prevent inmates climbing onto roofs seven months after this riot. Works are ongoing and, and that's an important part of it, but it also just you know, demonstrates how, uh, how difficult this cohort is to manage. Police are yet to charge either of the inmates, but the arson squad is investigating the fire at the facility. Now, corrective services are determining whether to send the two detainees to Casuarina Prison's notorious Unit 18. Until next time, or until there's a third option. Ben Downey, 7 News. Nathan Lyon made history today as Australia swept a victory in the first test against Pakistan. But not every fan stayed to see the fast finish. Jeff Parry joins us live. Jeff, a protester was kicked out of Optus Stadium, trying to pick up where Australian opener Usman Khawaja left off. That's right, Angela. Earlier this week, Kawaja bared his soul over the situation in the Middle East, uh, writing on the bottom of his training shoes, all lives are equal and freedom is a human right. Kawaja prompted official intervention by the International Cricket Council uh, and agreed to tape over the messages on his shoes while he was playing. But a protester managed to sneak a banner bearing the same words, pass security at Optus Stadium and unfurl it in the stands. He was escorted out. Another patron was heard shouting pro palestine Palestinian slogans. A spokesperson for the stadium said a number of people were ejected for antisocial behaviour, not for the banner. Tim. Thank you, Jeff. And Ryan Daniels will have all the test highlights in sport live from Optus Stadium later this hour. A teenager has been charged over a dangerous chase through several suburbs on a dirt bike. The 16-year-old knew he was being tracked by the police helicopter, but officers say he didn't seem to care. 
Catch me if you can. It's a hard game to win against the police helicopter. Both the bike and its rider are allegedly unlicensed. Police say the 16-year-old was spotted roaring through residential streets in Dianella Tuesday morning. Watch as he crosses an overpass burns through a park before doubling back and finally spotting the eyes on him from the sky. He has one last crack at getting away before dumping the bike and surrendering. Game over. It's the latest in a string of incidents involving off-road bikes across Perth. Police are still hunting a rider who broke an officer's nose in Northlake earlier this month. Police say he was part of a teenage gang who terrorised several suburbs at high speed, pulling out in front of cars, weaving through traffic and mounting footpaths. And when they were cornered, police say an officer became a target. One of the bikes struck him and as it did, the passenger has, uh, has assaulted him as, a, as it was trying to escape. Unregistered bikes have become such an issue, WA police now have a dedicated squad within the traffic department just to track down the riders and seize the bikes. Revving up patrols to get the bikes off the streets. Monique Dirk, 7 News. A driver has escaped serious injury after ploughing into a home in Byford. The Mercedes-Benz lost control on Ballawarra Avenue just before midday today. Luckily, no one was at home at the time. Emergency services took the 28-year-old driver to Armidale Hospital for mandatory tests, where she's been questioned by police. Australia is on track to record an unfortunate milestone, our highest annual road toll since 2018. A crash that left an 84-year-old man dead and five others injured in country New South Wales today added to a 6% increase in deaths nationwide. But WA's road toll so far is slightly lower than 2022 and there's been a welcome decline in regional fatalities that last year almost doubled metropolitan crashes. Authorities are alarmed by a new RAC poll showing a quarter of drivers think it's OK to drive tired warning it's not worth the risk. After weeks of alarm over the mass release of immigration detainees, including hardened criminals, tonight 7 News can reveal an innocent young refugee was among them. He's now 26 and has suffered catastrophic hardship as a result of being imprisoned since childhood. And a warning, this story contains graphic descriptions of self-harm. From Saddam Hussein's Iraq, he took refuge in Iran, was persecuted there, so how lucky Mustafa felt arriving in the lucky country as a 16-year-old. Australia imprisoned him immediately for 10 years. I lost my childhood, I lost, you know, I lost everything. If not for the High Court ruling that permanent detention is unconstitutional, Mustafa would still be there with no end in sight. I could change my life in Australia, I hope now, like they could you know, like accept me in Australia. Unlike many foreign nationals detained because of their criminal records, most of his crimes were committed in detention. Minor assaults on guards as he lurched into severe depression and post-traumatic stress. <laughs> The man weeping as he watches is Mustafa's older brother. I tried to kill myself. I wanted to end my life many times. There are dozens of cuts on his forearm. He's been strapped to a bed and a nurse has had to hold a phone near his ear so he can hear me and give me instructions because he's eaten glass. This is the level of distress that this poor young man has been through. Ten years. Torture um, and inhumane and indecent treatment. Um, since he was a teenager, the Australian system has attempted to destroy the life of a child. Mustafa has a mild intellectual disability, no formal education, no tax file number, no government counsellors, no job, no real friends, no privacy and no country to call home. He is stateless. The government has had plenty to say over the High Court decision, but on child detention, we do not comment on individual cases. The opposition had a crack. What we needed to do was clean up Labor's mess when it came to illegal maritime arrivals. But Mustafa was continually denied freedom under Labor and coalition governments. Even worse, his claim as a genuine refugee was deemed legitimate. 
His mother was allowed out of detention years ago, but Mustafa was denied his freedom over the same character concerns that detained rapists and murderers. Look, I'm no, no risk, you know. I just want to have a better life. Robert Ovadia, 7 News. New polling has revealed traditional Labor voters are drifting away from the federal government and towards the coalition. Blue-collar workers feeling let down by Anthony Albanese's promise that life would be easier under him. Hard physical work. Brickies, plumbers, chippies, mechanics. For generations, the working class made up Labor's base. But not anymore. Now, at the moment, they're shifting to the LNP. The latest poll suggesting blue-collar workers are abandoning the government. Anthony Albanese has left tradies behind and now they're clearly going to leave him behind. Since August, Labor's two-party preferred support among voters with TAFE and vocational training educations has fallen from 57 to 48%. Voters switching sides. Support for the coalition jumping from 43 to 52 per cent among the same group. Overwhelmingly, the, the, the most significant drop out of all the de demographic cohorts that we closely watch. Peter Dutton's strategy targeting voters in the outer suburban areas and regions paying off as the cost of living continues to bite. Their basic bills, their rents and their mortgages are going through the roof and they've realised that Anthony Albanese's government doesn't have their back. But pollsters say the coalition shouldn't get comfortable, warning this group of voters isn't loyal. We could easily find ourselves having a conversation 18 months' time where they've flipped over to the other side again. The government doesn't comment on polls, but it'll be closely watching the numbers. And while there won't be any panicking over today's figures, if they're repeated in six months as Labor is gearing up for the next election, alarm bells will be ringing. Rob Scott, 7 News. Warships from the US and the UK have shot down as many as 15 attack drones over the Red Sea as the conflict in Gaza threatens to spread. The US said one of its guided missile destroyers responded to a wave of drones yesterday coming from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. The UK's Ministry of Defence tweeted it had intercepted a threat to merchant vessels using a Sea Viper missile. The warships weren't damaged and there were no injuries. The three Israeli hostages shot dead by forces sent to rescue them were waving a white flag. Israel says it was a tragic and grave mistake, but is doubling down on its attacks on Gaza. Israel's Bedouin Arab community gathers for the funeral of Samir Talalka. <laughs> held hostage by Hamas for weeks, shot dead by Israeli forces sent in to save him. Israel now says one of the three shirtless, unarmed men was waving a white cloth, shouting in Hebrew, before Israeli troops opened fire against the rules of engagement. Nearby, a building had been marked SOS, help, three hostages. It's a very, very complex battle space. Uh, the IDF is doing everything we can. Uh, there's been uh, multiple successes and there will also be mistakes. The IDF saying the soldiers who shot dead their countrymen won't be punished. <laughs> Families waiting for their loved ones to return home lost patience long ago, demanding fresh negotiations with Hamas. And put the best offer on the table to get the hostages back alive. Alive. We don't want them back in bags. Israel also releasing video claiming to have found more Hamas weapons in a Gaza hospital. As the few remaining hospitals still running continue to receive men, women and children injured in the unrelenting violence. In London, Hewitt Feld, 7 News. Civil works have begun on Perth's newest beachside development in our northern suburbs. The $107 million Ocean Reef Marina will eventually see a thousand new homes built near the water's edge. With new breakwaters completed, it means the onshore civil works can begin. $107 million to lay the groundwork ahead of construction. In a year's time, we should see single and multi-storey homes rising from the site. Really excited to see the next stage take place. And you're really now starting to see uh, the development of great social and economic infrastructure here in the northern suburbs. A marina with 550 pens, a 150 metre beach and an ocean pool are expected to draw thousands of people a week during summer. A new coastal destination for Western Australia, for visitors and tourists alike, with an ocean pool, a first for Perth. 
a thousand homes will eventually be built here, a mix of single residential and high-rise apartments. The development will include social or affordable housing in areas set aside for apartment blocks. The current policy is one in nine, but the government will quarantine one apartment block just for social housing. The minister was asked if he would consider another ocean pool being developed at Cottesloe. Good try. Can I say, can we focus on delivering one ocean pool for Western Australia first? I think it's going to be incredibly popular. Jeff Parry, Seven News. A nervous wait was over early for WA students who today found out their ATAR results. And 17 teenagers achieved a perfect score of 99.95. Another 175 students scored above 95. That's out of 9,722 who received an ATAR this year. Out of 13 top students willing to be identified, three studied at Perth Modern and two each at St Mary's Anglican Girls School and Williton Senior High. We're on the final countdown to Christmas, but many families are struggling to stretch their budgets to make room for gifts. Retailers say there are still plenty of people keeping shops busy, but many are trying to spend less. It's the silly season, but last minute Christmas shopping is serious business. With many household budgets strangled by cost of living pressures, it's never been more important to make a list and check it twice. Lots more bargains coming to Christmas shopping a little bit later because I know there's going to be more discounts coming up to the end of the shopping period. So yes, definitely shop wiser this year. Definitely looking at the prices before we buy stuff. Karen Up was packed today. Mecca had 45 staff on to try and keep up. The line for registers snaked around the store. Australians will spend $30 billion this festive season. That's 10% more than last year. Each person on average will fork out close to $1,500. Got a full, full bag of goodies. You know, I've spent a bit more than I'm uh, capable of spending, but <laughs> you know. He's not alone. One in five shoppers will rely on some form of credit to fund this festive season tough for families trying to create Christmas magic as the wish lists roll in. Lego's very, very popular this year, so there's lots of good Lego going out, I'm sure. But what if you've been a little cheeky this year? Is it too late to move from the naughty list to the nice list? Well, luckily this year there's not many on the naughty list. Most of them are on the nice list. But no, it's not too late. Never too late. There's just seven days to go. If you've started shopping, well, you're doing better than this guy. My uncle, my little cousins, my dad, my mum and that, you know. So you haven't started? No, I'm starting right now. Monique Dirks, 7 News. In breaking news now, a crime scene has been set up on Rottnest Island as police investigate an assault. Seven News can reveal the alleged victim is a 15-year-old girl who says she was attacked inside the island's toilet block that has been sealed off. The extent of her injuries isn't clear. Forensic officers have travelled to Rottnest today to gather evidence. Next in Seven News, a warning for parents using medicated gummy bears to get their toddlers to sleep. Plus, sampling Margaret River's best sour grapes. The government hits back at critics of the Prime Minister's WA wine tasting. Flood emergency in far north Queensland authorities race to respond to the worsening deluge. What's hidden inside the new golden rooster at the Notre Dame Cathedral. And Jimmy Barnes's family shares an update on the rockers recovery. That's next. A wine tasting in WA has sparked a verbal stoush. Liberal Senator Michaelia Cash declared the Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's Margaret River holiday proof he's out of touch after he sipped a wine that retails for $500 a bottle. I think that's um, uh, em eminently uh, reasonable. And if I was a Western Australian senator, I certainly wouldn't uh, be complaining about... Uh, the Prime Minister spending some holidays, well, well deserved holidays, uh, in my home state. Cullen Wines described the visit as very relaxed and said they were thrilled to host him. 
Doctors are warning parents they're risking possible prosecution to ensure a good night's sleep. The AMA is worried an increasing number of tired parents are bypassing Australian drug regulations to shop online for melatonin-laced gummy bears for their kids. They say there are other options to try before turning to medication that might not be correctly dosed. The use of melatonin is approved in Australia for children, but only with a prescription. Far North Queensland is in the grips of a flood emergency tonight. Half a metre of rain has fallen in just 24 hours, effectively turning Cairns into an island and residents are being warned to move to higher ground. Worse than Jasper's full force arrival. The cyclone's tail whips Far North Queensland with a flooding disaster. This is life-threatening events. We do not need people to be out and about. You're in a safe position. Please stay in that position. Nearly 600 millimetres of rain fell at Black Mountain between Port Douglas and Cairns. Half a metre in 24 hours at Karanda on the Tablelands and at least 300 millimetres in the major centres. These are really high amounts of rainfall and they're falling into catchments that are already saturated. Well, I've been speaking with people on the ground throughout the day and they say that they've never seen rainfall like this. 10,000 homes are currently without power. Many are underwater and residents have been told to evacuate. But getting in and out is an issue. Highways have crumbled. Cairns Airport is now closed, bringing travel chaos just a week before Christmas. Resorts are swamped, but not with tourists. Even the swim up bar is underwater. We've undertaken a number of rescues in the last 16 hours, 24 hours, where water has risen that rapidly that people haven't been able to, to get out. Though thankfully so far, no reports of serious injuries or deaths. With the rain and thunderstorms expected to continue for the next 24 hours, a nervous wait for residents. Melina Saris, 7 News. An apartment block under construction has been engulfed by flames in Colorado. Luckily, no one was living in the building, which was nearing completion, but fire crews were forced to fight the flames from a distance. It comes just days after another blaze at the same location, with the damage described as extensive. A large crane has hoisted a new copper rooster to the top of the Notre Dame Cathedral spire, which famously came crashing down when fire tore through the building in 2019. The new rooster is made of golden copper, with parchment featuring the names of workers and donors hidden inside. The cathedral is set to reopen next year. Jimmy Barnes is out of bed and on his feet just days after having open heart surgery. His wife Jane posted a photo of the rocker in the hospital saying he's on the mend and has been walking up and down the hallway. She also thanked well wishes for their positivity. The 67-year-old went under the knife because of complications from a bacterial infection which spread to his heart. Still to come on 7 News, an NDIS crackdown. The federal government zeroes in on providers who overcharge. Next, the new task force set up to stop price gouging, how it's helping participants. A mystery woman's incredible act of kindness at an Australian toy store. And dozens of holidaymakers caught out by bogus flight bookings. Details on a special news investigation. That's next. The federal government is cracking down on NDIS providers inflating prices to take advantage of taxpayer funding. A new task force is being set up with the aim of eliminating price gouging. Nicole Lee is one of more than 600,000 NDIS participants fed up with being viewed as a human ATM. I'm sick of being seen as a rolling dollar sign. I'm sick of being seen as somebody's cash cow and all disabled people are. It's unethical. It's immoral, but it's not illegal to rip people off of disabilities. The federal government says dodgy national disability insurance scheme providers are inflating prices for participants. But from next week, the ACCC will have further power to crack down on price gouging. It is shockingly widespread that if you tell a service provider that you have an NDIS package, all of a sudden the price for everything goes up. If we've got the right amount of money in our plans and people are actually giving us value for money and not overcharging us, then we shouldn't have to be going and saying, hang on, I ran out of funds, but that's because all of these services, you know, took a little bit of, you know, off the top. A new task force is being set up to stop the exploitation 
And next year, the government will introduce legislative changes to make non-compliance a criminal offence. We'll have to get bipartisan support, which I'm confident we will receive. To watch other people overcharge us and consistently do that without a care, without any conscience, you know, this really hurts. So to see these laws come in, this is a really, really um, big win for the disability community. Sarah Jane Bell, 7 News. The National Coronavirus Helpline has been shut down. The federal government has confirmed the hotline was quietly closed earlier this month. Anyone who calls the line will now hear a pre-recorded message advising them to call a general triage phone number. The government said the closure was due to a drop in demand. The Premier says the government hasn't broken its public sector wages policy by offering extra allowances to WA nurses. The Australian Nursing Federation had been demanding a 5% wage increase. But the union is now championing a new offer that would pay nurses a professional development allowance between seven and $1,400 on top of the 3% increase they're already getting. Uh, professional development is an important part of the way of the nurses' claim, so we're keen to actually understand that and see if we can meet their needs. Nurses will be polled over the holiday period. The collapse of an Australian travel agency has left dozens of travellers fearing they've been scammed. Families have arrived at airports to be told by airlines their bookings have not been paid for. Niranjana Chaudhry's holiday travel plans are in disarray. The hard-working nurse fears she's been scammed by a travel agent, ruining her plans for a long-awaited family reunion in Nepal. I work double shift, night shift, just to go spend some quality time with my family. So it's playing with our emotions. Scion Travels had been operating out of this Victorian house, the property now on the sites of the Sheriff's Office. It's alleged more than 50 customers nationwide have been ripped off almost a quarter of a million dollars with bogus flight bookings. Families have been arriving at airports to find that their flights haven't been paid for. We input your passport information into the system, we do not find your ticket information. The boss of the company, Nani Ram Ariel, has acknowledged he couldn't provide the services but has made multiple offers to repay them. He's posted on social media that Scion Travels is being liquidated. Despite the company's status, we will reimburse all customer payments in due course. But no one except myself is responsible for this nightmarish situation to happen. But some customers have no faith in the promise to pay them back. We can't rely on him because he doesn't have a god to talk to us. One of the alleged victims had booked a flight to return to Nepal for his wedding. Already out of pocket, he's had to borrow money to be able to afford to pay for a second booking. Scion Travels claims to be one of Australia's leading travel agents but has never been accredited. ASIC, the corporate watchdog, has not received any notice of the company being under administration. The alleged scam has been reported to police. Some customers fear their money is gone as they go nowhere. Because I have no money, no saving at this time. Cameron Bow, 7 News. Secret Santa has struck twice, giving an early Christmas gift to parents arriving at a Melbourne toy store to find their buys had been paid off. It happened at another toy world in Bunbury last week, but whether you believe in a happy coincidence or not, it's definitely brought some holiday cheer. Sundays at work don't get much better than this. Your lay-by has been completely paid off. Store manager Nicole is telling customers eight and a half thousand dollars of their laybys were paid by a stranger. Oh, really? Yep, completely paid oh, off. That's amazing. A random act of kindness one week from Christmas, good karma of the highest order. Thought that she might give us a couple of hundred dollars, and when she said the whole lot, I was just I was speechless and had a bit of a cry, and it was just amazing. There is really some special people in this world, isn't there? It sure is. All up, 47 laybys were taken care of, but this kind stranger wasn't the only one. Yesterday morning, we actually had a, a young guy in his 20s come in and donate $600, and we had a great-grandma on Friday give us $250. Toy World has been popular with secret Santas. One in Bunbury, WA, paid off more than 12 grand of laybys. And at a Kmart in Melbourne, a similar story last month. I think that is just amazing. Oh my goodness, I can't think. Is there someone I can thank? She wants to remain anonymous, but I will pass on it on your thanks to her. Making a tough year for some end on a high. Blake Johnson, 7 News. 
One of Australia's favourite Christmas traditions has returned for another year. More than 30,000 carolers packed into the domain in Sydney last night to join Sunrise host Nat and Shervo for the Woolworths Carols in the Domain. The full show will be broadcast into WA Homes from 7.30 on Saturday. Still to come tonight, delivery deadline. Your last chance to post a parcel for Christmas. Next, the cut-off date saving you from spoiling the big day. Plus, a delivery rider's lucky escape, what witnesses said just before the crash. The high-flying volunteers helping to save little lives this Christmas. An overdose warning for a popular weight loss drug. And coming up in sport from Optus Stadium, all over. The Aussies dominant on day four here at Optus. Plus, why Blake Akers is so happy and concerned in the English Premier League. And... Now, Fuel Watch. Perth's petrol prices brought to you by Fuel Watch and 7 News. Dashcam has captured a pizza delivery man being clipped and thrown from his bike in Sydney. A driver and passenger in the car behind had just been talking about how difficult his job must be. I'd never want to do it on a scooter. How dangerous. Just if someone knocks you off the bike. Seconds later, the rider veers into oncoming traffic and someone does. Incredibly, he wasn't hurt. If you're hoping to send Christmas cards and presents in time for the big day, you'd better get in quick. Tomorrow is your last chance to send cards or letters. The deadline for sending parcels using regular posts within WA was on Friday, but you can still use express posts for the next three days at a higher cost. It's usually a time filled with joy, but many families across Australia are facing a Christmas in hospital. One charity is helping those who need urgent health care most, thanks to the kindness of volunteers on the ground and in the air. Taking flight. Goodbye. Miles is embarking on a journey that has been done many times before. The 22-month-old was born with a lymphatic malformation, swelling from cysts. His family lives in Glen Innes in northern New South Wales. There is next to no doctors or anything there. Charity airline Little Wings has helped with transport from the hangar to the hospital. It means everything. It makes everything so much easier. The organisation is 90% volunteer led with pilots and drivers working every day of the year. Wayne Cotterell has completed 500 flights. He says every single one is special. To help people and use my skills as a pilot to get them to and from home to the city where they need to be for their medical treatment. In the space of 10 years, Little Wings has increased the number of weekly flights from 12 to 70. It plans to expand across the country so many more communities can access this much needed service. These incredible people donate their time because they want to give back. They want to use their skills and their time to make a difference. Angelique Opie, 7 News. Doctors are raising the alarm on the risk of overdosing on one of the world's most popular weight loss medications. To make matters worse, imitation drugs are popping up that have health experts worried. Don't miss that story soon on 7 News. But first, Ryan's here with Sport Live from Optus Stadium and Ryan, it's all over. And Tim, a dominant performance on day four saw the Aussies wipe out the visitors with a whole day to spare. The highlights from a cricket clinic next as Nathan Lyon joined an elite club. Mitch Marsh loaded up on his home turf, then Mitch Stark struck early as the hosts took control. And Blake Akers, 12 months on, no blues on his Carlton move.
Welcome back to Optus Stadium, where the Aussies have claimed victory in the first test match of the summer. A dominant day four saw Australia set Pakistan a target of 450 to win. Usman Khawaja and Mitch Marsh leading the way with the bat. The visitors never made it to day five, all out for just 89. Part of the carnage, Nathan Lyon collected his 500th test wicket. Here's Lockie Byrne. By Vultures. He's got All hail the Lion King. Etched in cricketing history. Joining only seven others in the world to reach 500 wickets. Two of them, the greatest ever Australian bowlers. Shane Warne, Glenn McGrath, now Nathan Lyon. And I'm sure all of you across Australia can appreciate what perfection you've witnessed over this career. The final touches on a fierce battle. Only able to add two more today, Steve Smith. Oh, good shout. Good shout and gone. Travis Head fighting fire with fire. Oh, lovely shot. Shaheen over pitching and Travis Head seizing upon it. Holding out to cover for just 14. Oh. Oh, and that's... Travis Head out early, and the wicket for Jamal. Mitch Marsh picking up where Head left off. That's a big bomb. And almost departing in the same fashion. Thumps it straight to mid off, in and out of the hands of the skipper. Manus Labashane back in the nets, cleared after a nasty blow to the finger yesterday. The day four Perth pitch had plenty more to give. Ouch. But it was a lack of bounce that caught out Kawaja. That hurts. That didn't get up. A sore arm, but cool head. Hi. Clever from Kawaja for four runs. Upping the ante after lunch. What a shot for the 50. Marsh. Pair adding another 50 runs in half an hour. Oh, how beautifully played is that? The fall of Kwaja saw the Aussies declare at 5 for 233. All eyes were on the goat. 500 test wickets. Did you believe that that could ever happen? Oh, no, God, no. But he'd have to wait. The first over specialist coming out hungry. And that's his best. That is his best. Abdullah Shafiq gone for two. Skipper Shan Masood unable to eclipse him. And this time he's touched it. And he's on the way. The Aussies with some work to do in the field. Why does that happen? Every time that you even look at the rubbish, it just goes, oi! <laughs> but Alex Carey, the only one who needed to worry about the ball. That one is out! It's Baba, the big wicket! Finally, with only four to choose from, it took a review, and he's the got it. but he only stayed on 500 for three more balls. The next came without a doubt. Oh, I've got him. He's got 501 with a shooter. Hazelwood cleaned up the last two in a row. And Australia win by 360. The hometown hero named player of the match for his 90 and 63 not out. Next up, Boxing Day at the G. Lockie Burns, 7 News. Docker turned blue, Blake Akers says he's found his home after a rewarding first season at Carlton. One of the stars of this year's final series says a grand final with good mate Patrick Cripps is now in sight. With his first season at the Blues under his belt, Blake Akers has had his pre-season disrupted by shoulder surgery and won't be in full training until after the Christmas break. Just really no contact at the moment. Probably a good chance to do it now while we've got the time over Christmas and to let it rest over that period and then, yeah, get straight back into it. Akers was arguably the player of Carlton's final series, flourishing on the big stage. The rush I got from that goal and... The buzz around the stadium at the time was unreal. I enjoyed it at the time, but you losing a prelim, getting so close to a granny was sort of a bit of um, a disappointing end. Despite now feeling at home, the 28-year-old wasn't prepared for the pressure of being at one of Melbourne's yeah. biggest clubs. I first struggled with it at the start. You can see how our fans, how passionate they are when we're 
when we're winning and when we're losing. Yeah, it's something I haven't really seen or been a part of. After a rocky start, the Blues won 10 of their last 11 home and away games, culminating in a top four finish. Carlton is Acres' third club and the last if he has it his way. I'm not a big fan of moving teams. I've been doing it a bit too much, so hopefully I'm, I'm, done, I'm done with all that. The hunger is building for an even more successful 2024 alongside fellow draftee and WA mate Patrick Cripps. We have good conversations all the time about how we get, get the group better, how we get each other better. We made it easy picking Carlton to come to. Laura Spurway, 7 News. A terrifying moment in the Premier League this morning. Luton and Bournemouth's clash was abandoned after a player collapsed mid-match. A warning to viewers, you may find the following vision distressing. English football brought to a standstill. It looks like a very nasty situation here. Luton Town's captain Tom Lockyer suddenly collapsing with no one near him. The match with Bournemouth stopped, both teams only able to watch Coming as paramedics on. worked, the fans giving their support. The 29-year-old responsive as he was stretched from the pitch, quickly taken to hospital. Luton later confirming Lockyer suffered a cardiac arrest, but is in a stable condition. An all too familiar situation for the club. Lockyer also collapsed in the middle of their championship player final due to a heart condition just seven months ago. Luton's manager Rob Edwards distraught. The match soon abandoned. In Manchester, another blow for City. And Matita's there! A 2 0 lead wasted. Crystal Palace snatching a 2 0 draw with an injury time penalty. Elise scores! Just one win in the past six games for the Sky Blues, now three points off leaders Liverpool despite playing an extra game. We don't deserve to win. When you do away these penalties, because we don't deserve it. Chelsea ending a two game losing streak, 2 0 over Sheffield United. James Manton, 7 News. The PNC Championship is even more of a family affair for Tiger Woods this year, playing with son Charlie in the family teams event in Florida. Tiger also had daughter Sam as his caddy in the opening round. Seven shots off the pace, Team Woods have plenty of room for improvement in one area in particular. I mean, I drove the ball really good today. I didn't miss a fairway. We still managed to shoot eight under, so... We just suck at putting. <laughs> just that summed it up right there. <laughs> it's Tiger's second tournament back after ankle fusion surgery. So the perfect start to the summer of cricket here for the Aussies. A 360-run win for Australia. The West Test, a big winner. Congratulations to Nathan Lyon. What a brilliant career. And still going strong, Ange and Tim. That's why he's the GOAT. Thanks, Rhino. <laughs> Weight loss drugs like Ozempic are now at the centre of overdose concerns. More people are using imitation drugs due to shortages, which has Australia's medical watchdog worried. Oh, 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 They're the popular drugs known for rapid weight loss, but as demand for medications like Ozempic and Wagovi skyrocket, a surge in overdoses is making headlines in the US. As a drug becomes more and more used in the community, Inevitably, people will accidentally take it incorrectly. Semaglutide is the active ingredient in the drugs. America's poison control centres saw almost 3,000 semaglutide-related calls this year, a spike of 1.5,000% on 2019. High demand has led to worldwide shortages of major brands, with more people turning to imitation or compounded drugs, which don't come in preset doses. They're dispensed in vials with needles and syringes, and it's up to the patients to draw out the correct amount of medication. Australia's Therapeutic Goods Administration found an emerging trend for telehealth providers to offer compounded semaglutide-like products, warning the products are unapproved and have not been evaluated for safety, quality or efficacy. Sydney socialite Roxy Jasenko recently spoke about her own overdose, trying to shed weight gained during cancer treatment. I have never, ever genuinely felt so unwell. I thought, this is it, I'm going to die. Warning, it's a heavy price to pay. In the United States, Jacqueline Robson, 7 News. A hot run up to Christmas and a first look at your Christmas Eve forecast after the break. Plus where you can cast your vote in the Alinta Energy Light Up Christmas competition. For us, Christmas is hot. Christmas is going to the beach. We've got seafood, we've got the Christmas ham there. Family and friends are there, it's a wonderful day. 
Taking a look at the weather now, it was a warm night across Perth getting down to 21 and today's top was a touch over 31. Looking interstate tomorrow, 29 for Sydney, a top of 30 in Melbourne, Brisbane partly cloudy and 32. Here in the west, 32 will be the max for Broome, windy for Geraldton and 35, 31 for Bunbury, cool and cloudy for southern towns and a top of 30 in Kalgoorlie. There's a strong wind warning for local waters. South Easterlies are set to reach 30 knots at times with two and a half metre seas. For Perth, dropping to 16 degrees tonight, then sunny and 32 tomorrow, windy Tuesday and 33, before soaring to 36 Wednesday. Easterlies continuing Thursday and the clear skies and heat will hang around for the rest of the week. Christmas Eve, a scorching 36. Entries have now closed for the 7 News and Alinta Energy Lineup Christmas competition. From tomorrow, you can head to 7news.com.au forward slash Christmas lights to choose from our top 10 finalists. The winning home will receive a $5,000 FPOS gift card plus their Alinta Energy gas bill paid for a year. The winner will be announced on Christmas night. And that is 7 News for this Sunday. Thanks for your company. I'll be back with evening updates. And for the latest news, head to 7news.com.au. Stay with us now for Spotlight.